Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at the sea spill, the past sea spill cycles, particularly, especially in this, and almost exclusively in this second quadrant here. And we've talked in the past about the second quadrant and how important it is, and essentially it's a time of separation where you have the good coming out away from the evil, or Jehovah, the those who follow the light of Jehovah coming forth and attempting to live in a higher, better condition, a higher, better social condition than what they had been. And so we're going to take a look, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six in the past, I'm only going to go back six, you could go back further, um, and then we're going to look in, into the future for sea uh, spell, spell cycles in the second quadrant. Remember, that's the, the, quad, the uh, quadrant where you have the arena of Te, and then followed by the arena of Esfome. So, um, <clears throat> we'll start with 1216. 1216 to 1249, that's when man traversed here. And in 1216 to 1249, what happened during that particular time is that Aristotle had gotten introduced into Christendom. Now, Aristotle uh, looked at the outer world, the corporeal world, the outer realm, the importance of it, compared to Plato, which uh, in the Christian religion, Augustine, um, the, one of the philosophers of, of early Christianity, who, uh, whose writings got adopted by the uh, Christian Church as um, basically their foundation, um, he based a lot of his upon uh, Plato in the Platonic, uh, Neoplatonic system, but uh, basically uh, it was an interior thing, an in inner th the inner realm was all important. Now along came Aristotle, which was more or less lost to those in, in Europe in, in the uh, what were called the Dark Ages. and. Um, prior to this, since, since the fall of Rome. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And anyway, as we said, Aristotle got introduced into Christendom, which introduced this outer realm and the focus away from the inner realm. And so during this time, from 1216 to 1249, there was a great, um, I won't call it turmoil, ferment, ferment, ferment within Christianity itself. Because a lot of, and this also, by the way, 1216 to 1249, we saw, because of Aristotle and all this, people looking out in the outer realm and trying to understand what's going on in the outer realm, rather than, oh, well, it's just God, he'll take care of it. It's his thing, don't worry about it. Yours is to, you know, just go up, to live here and die and go up to heaven. Don't worry about the outer realm so much. Well, but all that changed with Aristotle, the introduction to Aristotle, and methods of logic and so on and so forth. And so um, the intellectuals of that day, the intelligentsia, were in the church because in those times in Europe there was no other place where it was happening it was the for as far as being educated. Uh, the nobles to some extent, um, but not to the extent that they would later, but, uh, but also we're talking about Western Christianity, not East, Eastern Christianity in Constantinople, which is uh, where they did know about Aristotle and all that. But um, anyway, so during that time, um, Aristotle essentially got integrated into or accepted into the Christian, the body of Christian theology. Um, it wasn't going to go anywhere, and so they, you know, they tried to fight to get it, you know, and and deal with it, and try to uh, because it it disturbed a lot of the old foundations of the church, and so they had to had to deal with it. But this introduction of the outer realm and all that had a great significance, and Jehovah used it to move man toward forward. Now remember what it says in Oaspi that. Um, during a Danhe cycle, the last 600 years or so of the Danhe cycle sees an increase in the intellect of man, in, in the 
and he starts to think, well, he's the, the, the highest manifestation of creation since ever because they've lost the back, most of the lost, you know, the back records and all that. Well, um, Aristotle then became, by the time that the cycle came back around here in 1349, Aristotle had been pretty well um, integrated into the church. Because we have to remember that when we talk about these, these changes and these movements, it's not a snap of the finger thing, boom, boom, turning on a light switch and turning it off. But it transitions, it's like a dimmer switch, if we can remember from those old days, those of us who are older can remember them, but the, you, they gradually turn up the light. And, and when it gets up in here, it speeds up the, the, the coming forth of the light. And now, and also remember that over here, that that's the time where the tree is and the growth and the, the independence, the space, the intellectual intellect um, comes forth. But it's also, remember, a time of separation. And so, this, um, this separation was more or less a movement toward, away from the inner realm, toward the outer realm, toward the corporeal realm. And so we come to the next time around here from 1349 to 1382. Well, 1349 was Petrarch and uh, Picasso, people like that, who set forth the, what was called the humanist movement, or became, no, became known as the humanist movement. And um, because of what had happened uh, with Aristotle and all that, and they found all, all these, uh, they, they, they looked backwards, uh, at that time, way back here, they were looking back and then seeing, well, you know, what what else, we, all this stuff was lost to us. All these great, what they call great civilizations of the past, Rome and Greek, Greece, they, they didn't really know anything about it, so they started going and searching through the old manuscripts and so forth. And these people in 1349, they were like the, the men of letters. And they, they essentially, it's called the Renaissance, uh, the European Renaissance. And um, they essentially tried to emulate the, uh, the, the, mostly for the most part, the Roman Republic. Um, if you were an educated man at all, um, you learned Latin then, because that was not, that had not been the tongue per se, but uh, the, the, the classical Latin, that is to say, that's, that's what they were attempting to, uh, because, if, because if you can write it, I mean, if you can articulate it and write it, then you can share it, you see, the knowledge and all that. So uh, that's, that went gr forth in, in great strides from 1349 to 1382. So now we're going to come around the wheel again. And remember, this, this humanism had to do, again, with the outer realm. And, the, and it had to do with, well, man is important. Not just God is important in his, in his kingdom up there, but man, per se, here in his own place, in his own realm, you know, that God created him. There's, the humanists were saying, they were, they, he created man to understand this outer realm out here and to be able to explain it. This is where the concept of natural law came from. And that... Uh, it was a law of gods, you know, how things worked. And so it was valid to look, look at that and see how things worked. And from that then came the idea of natural law being applied to spiritual things. And because if there was a natural law governing all the, you know, gravity and all that kind of thing, uh, which it wasn't called that back then, whatever it was called, but if, but if there was all this, then the spirit realm also had something similar to that. They thought that. You see, this was, and that was part of the Cephas thing. This, uh, and remember, the, all the way since the time of Cephantes, that man has been going through a measure of Cephas, and by the end of the bond cycle, man had finished Cephas. Cephas was the established, and that included laws. And the, uh, and so, they, th they thought of, uh, they didn't think of the Creator and, well, any, as a, his personal presence uh, and his system in order. They didn't look upon what was going on as his system in order, but they looked upon it as being laws set forth by the Creator. And out of that would come deism, 
which said, well, the, the Creator's God's there, and he sort of set these things in motion, and, and uh, you know, seeing what man does with them. Well, uh, which, by the way, I'm, I'm just on a side note here, on, on the founding of the Republic, um, some people say, oh, they, well, the founders were deists, or the founders, uh, you know, they, or they would, they were Christians or whatever, but they really, what they did is they, they called upon providence a lot, providence, providence. They, so the deist God would not have this providence. Somebody, because the deist God didn't interact, but, uh, but the provider did. A provider would provide for, and so when they went forth, which is going to be the next time around, well, not yet, but from 1482 to 1516, there was a separation from the old world to the new world. And this was, uh, of course, when uh, uh, most famously uh, Colombo went forth and uh, discovered for the Europeans uh, the Gautaman, Gautaman uh, continents here, although they did not understand it was Gautaman continents really until it wasn't uh, commonly known amongst the populace and uh, even among some of the educated ones because it, uh, methods of communication were not particularly great back then. So Providence um, uh, he who provides, so that you can see now this is the Creator we're talking about, this is Jehovah, although they didn't know, that they didn't necessarily use that name, but um, rather than divine law or natural law, a, a kind of a thing. Well, anyway, but all that was, you see, from 1349 to th 1382, that got sort of set in motion with the, with the humanists, because they looked back and they saw the laws Oh, all these laws and, and that the Romans had, and they were a great social order. And um, so, but, but not so much the Greeks until much later, but mostly it was, it was the Romans that they looked back. And when you, we look at the founding of the Republic, uh, which was going to be happening here from uh, 1749 to 1782, or the, I should say the separation from the mother country of England toward independence and all that, one of the models that they had still was the Roman model. The, and so, um, anyway, all that was back here at this time. And so then we go around the sea spell wheel again to the second quadrant. Because, by the way, what happens all the way around here is that, that what, what the, the, they go forth, okay, and they, they, they sort of set up these new ideals and all that stuff, but then... Then the beast says, whoa, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, 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 we can't, you know, we got to, you know. And so there's a struggle up here to see what gets established. And um, usually it's not as high as the idealists want, and it's not as low as the, uh, the beast would want, like, but somewhere, somewhere in between. And um, anyway, but that goes to maturity. And then there's a, a fresh inspiration that comes, and it comes back around, and, and it finally gets to come out into expression into the outer realm. That, that vision, the inspiration that they have, uh, 18, I didn't put it here, but 1849 is also here as we go up to 1882. As we go forth, um, went forth from 1882 to 1916, that was also a time of separation. But we'll get to that because we're bouncing way ahead of from where we were Start, where we were at, which was 1349 to uh, 1382. And then we got to 1482, and we went to 1516, and we saw that that was a time of separation from the old world. And uh, the setting up, of, you know, it's a whole new world now, because that's kind of like what happens here. It's a whole new world being introduced, not just at that time, but every time around here on the sea spell during this particular time. And so then we went... Uh, so the next uh, cycle up was uh, from 1616. So from 1616 to 1649 was the next time around, and what happened then was there was a separation from the mother country of England of a specific sort. The pilgrims came over. Jehovah inspired the pilgrims to come over, 
and found uh, in, in the Plymouth colony and uh, for God's sake as they said for the sake of God they came over and for consciousness sake 1616 to 1649 and then a lot of Puritans also came over those who wanted to purify the Church of England and all that so for religious purposes religious freedom of religion and all that freedom to practice their religion they came over here so that was a separation there and so then we go around the wheel again and now we come to 1749 to 1782 and of course that was when the colonies the American colonies separated from the mother country of, of England and we go around the wheel again and now it's a separation from 1882 to 1916 and that's when Shalem was first set up that the faith has started going forth um, after Owaspi had been published and attempted to set up Shalem and to, attempted to set up the founding of the Father's Kingdom on earth it was like a first fruit or an early fruit in, in the early springtime and the cold harsh uh, winds blew and, and killed it off but nevertheless the seed was there it was set forth the uh, precedent was set for going forth okay and now the next time around that we're coming around here is from 2016 to 2049 which is where we are at today and so this is where we're going to see a separation toward as we mentioned in previous videos toward the fraternity social order and so how are we going to get to that social order well we'll talk about that a bit later but and we've already spoken about that in past videos but uh, the next time back around here uh, next time around here, we're get, it's going to be 2149. So, from where we are right now, which is um, 2016, and when we come back around here, it'll be, it's going to be 2149. And this is going to be, so that's one sea spell away, this is going to be the first founding of the Father's Kingdom on Earth. In its fullness. Not all the way around the Earth, just founded in, in uh, a seed, a core, and third resurrection, crystal and third resurrection, Jehovah's, and Jehovah's kingdom of God through the Lord's and all that, and through this kingdom. So this, is, so this is going to go all the way around at 2149, that the big movement toward that is going to be, toward Jehovah's kingdom is going to be from 2149 to 2182 around the world and then it has to get integrated by the rest of the world and by the time it gets down here at 2249 the Father's Kingdom will be in ascendancy all the way around the world and I didn't put it in here but then you have 2282 from 2282 to uh, uh, 22, uh, 2316 that's when man is going to go forth sort of away from the uh, dross of the past totally beyond that and and it's like this whole new vista is going to open up for man as to uh, you know living and 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 actually having the s tree of light available and accessible easily accessible and not just easily accessible but nurtured and allowed to grow and expand so that's that's what's coming up and and so we can see the potency of the sea spells here and that this is not a statistical aberration that you don't you can't have one two three four five six in a row which is what we just showed here and that's not yet well I'm sure they'll be find some statisticians statisticians who might say that it is but it's not really and as I said you can go further back if you want but there's a cautionary note here too because if you go too far back because this is Cosman based this is a Cosman based wheel C spell and if you go too far back um, it's more has to do more with bond than the coming Cosman it still has to do with what's coming up in Cosman but it's not so evident and in that case then you have to actually look at the C spell where it's bond based 
that means it starts off here at minus 1552, that is to say 1552 BCE, and then you work your way around through the sea spells and you, and you come forward, and that's the bond, that's what happened during the bond cycle. And that's going to have precedent during the bond cycle, for the most part, over what's going on coming up in Cosman, but because Cosman is such a great event, remember, because it's the end, it was the end of a measure, and the beginning of a new measure is huge. And it's also the end of a Gadol and the start of a new Gadol, huge. And it's the end of an era and start of a new era, huge, all those big things. So this is a very important event. And of course you had the angels of Jehovah, the Ethereans, come 400 years before the start of Cosman, back in, um, well I didn't show it here, down here, but 1449 would be here, going up to 1482. 1480 to 400 years. Now if you notice, there's 400 year difference going this way because um, the three C, there are three C spells in a C sweep, which is 400 years, sometimes called also a wave or a, uh, a time, an atmosphere in time. Anyway, um, Oh, I want to mention one more thing now in regard to this, because this uh, this is going to be real quick, okay, and that is that in 1349, from 1349 to 2016, is 666 and two-thirds year. Okay, I believe it's from June, the solstice, 13... 49 to February 18th, 2016, 666 and two-thirds years. That's, uh, excuse me, uh, yes, that, that, and that is a beast, great beast cycle of 666 years. Now, I didn't show it here, but if I was to put it in here, and which I can do right now, so it's going to go from uh, 2016 until... 2182. 166 years, because in a great beast cycle, each quadrant is 166 years. Okay, and 166 and two thirds. And you go all the way over here, it's 500 years, and then down here is 666 years. And 666 and two thirds, more precisely. Okay, and so what happened then? The last time that the Great Beast Cycle was in this position, because remember it takes 666 and two-thirds year to go back, was from 1349 to 1516. And that was, and during this time, remember in this second quadrant, right in here, the beast does not have quite so much power. It's, uh, its power is, how should we say, it's, it's scattered. Um, they, they tend to... Uh, be disunited, and um, that's one of the things that we can talk about too, that of, of what's coming up in here. But from 1349 to 1516, so what happened there? 1349, that was the humanism movement, as we mentioned, and all that, and, and the movement toward modernism and the modern state and away from Christianity. Essentially, this was the breakup by 1516. This was this was movement to separate from Christianity, to separate that unity, unified field that Christianity had been holding. And of course the Protestant movement and all that came um, after that, uh, well, shortly after this right in here, Luther posted his thesis and all that, but there was a lot of, there was agitation going on much before that, and wanting purification of the church and all that, and the church of course, they were preoccupied with, with their own things and and sort of disregarded the movement toward uh, Jehovah's uh, kingdom per se. Not that they didn't necessarily want to deal with it, it's just that they, they really couldn't because of uh, self-concerns and, and the beast itself. Because remember what it says in Awaspi, that the beast destroys itself. Now that, doesn't mean, now that can mean shooting oneself in the foot, but it can also mean that one beast here fights another beast here. And the same type of thing is uh, from 2016 to 
2182, we're going to see the movement, great movement, away from the old system of the past, the past all the way back to Sathanti's times of Cephas, that whole measure, and uh, all the all the darkness and everything that happened since then. Man is going to work through that and establish something anew up here. And now remember the well. Okay, I'm not going to say any more about it for now, except for the great beast cycle um, has more to do in, in many ways with the physical world and the physical body than with the, the because the physical body is the beast of, of man. It's it's the outer covering of his spirit. So and it's in here in the beast world in in the corporeal world, a part of that. And that's so that we can learn to understand Jehovah's creation. And uh, from the inside, as it were, or from, you know, actually being there. And so, um, so this is, this, is a, this is a fantastically great time for moving forward. Because remember, this part down here is darkness, light. Darkness, light. We're coming up into the light area. You see the separation. It's like a, a whole new world gets, gets opened up. Because... That which got here, the descent of the light that went down into the soul, a man said, yeah, that's it, that's what we got to move toward. And so man moves toward that, and they get here and it starts entering the outer realm. So now we have the inner realm feeding the outer realm right up in here. And so those inner ideals are coming out. And um, it's possible, it's possible as we go forth here, um, well... There has been a suggestion, well, that, that, that in this time, capitalism, as we know it, is going to cease. And that's, um, there, there's, a, there's a part of it that's true, but there's also a part of it that can be misunderstood or not, not clearly understood. And that is that the money system is not going to disappear, per se, but we're talking, really what we're talking about is the money getters and the, uh, those who go forth. Now the old way had always been, you know, fighting with the barrel of a gun, a, a ruling by the barrel of a gun, ruling with force, with might. The same view goes all the way back to uh, whenever, but, but most recently, at least, at least as far as the greatest effect upon man, was at the bond cycle with the uh, Triune Confederacy and their uh, policy of beating away the evildoer, punishing the evildoer and all that. But all that, all that is, um, this, this, it got set up to, what, what, to where you have, you know, faith and weapons of war and all that. Well, well, this is the Uzayan social order. They have faith in the weapons of war. You see, the Republic of the United States was set up with this in mind, the Second Amendment, you know, you shall not uh, stop man from having weapons of war. Because in case, you know, the government gets out of hand, then, then those, no, that's, that's what Jefferson may have had in mind. But the others had in mind that, you know, if we get attacked from somewhere, we'll be armed and ready. So if the British try to take us over, or the French, or whomever, back then, you know, that, that we'll be a ready fighting force. Because it was all about faith in that. But they also had faith in providence. They, they thought they could have faith both in the Creator and in death, weapons of death, which uh, we know is not possible. It's been proven it's not possible. Anyway, so what are you going to have here? Now, uh, I want to mention something back here from 1349 until uh, 1382. And, and even around there, but, the, but this was a time when um, the feudal system really started, uh, it was, uh, man was in transition away from the feudal system. And um, so you had a lot of traders and all that that would go, uh, and, 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 and merchants that would carry goods here, hither and thither. And there were all these different... Um, petty warlords here and there or, or dominion holders you know I own this property right here where the river goes through and so if you're going to cross this my chain is here you pay me money and all that and so what the money getters wanted the merchants and all that and they said uh, you know look 
uh, they just started supporting the kings, essentially, uh, because they wanted a unified realm so that there'd be laws and all that so they could travel safely from one place to another place without being molested because they wanted to prosper, they wanted to, you know, make money, and uh, but also to provide goods and services. So it wasn't all about just making money. We have to bear that in mind. It's not all evil because there's also the good aspect of it, which is that it does provide a lot of good and services. It did provide a lot of good and services. And that's why in the Constitution of the United States that, that was put in there, uh, established there, that was a part of what was established, was this money-getter system, and it was to break down the barriers between the nations and all that. Well, now today, we still have all these nations, all these, with all these, and, and so you have uh, people trying to get reciprocity between the nations, and reciprocity and trade, and all this, for the money-getter's sake. Well, that sort of in contrast, uh, uh, contradicts or contravenes or goes against those who supply the weapons of war and who profit from war because that is a huge chunk. You look at the budget and you see the huge chunk of money that goes into uh, military, not just in the United States but in other countries as well that they have a certain amount set aside for that but especially in the United States. Um, and so uh, it's possible that we could see that uh, we, if we have someone like, like Mr. Trump, who's essentially a money-getter and wants to see this, this money getting around, and he's for the money-getters and all that, and not especially for war. Now, he, not that he couldn't be influenced, he might be influenced, who, we'll have to wait and see, assuming that he gets in, because when we're making this video, the electors still haven't decided. The courts, if it goes to the courts, the courts haven't decided. So there's a lot of turmoil in this election. But anyway, but the point being that regardless of who's elected here, that the, um, the, the money getters around the world, not just in the United States, but around the world, they want a stable system. They want, just like back in the Middle Ages, you know, they want to be able to travel here and there without getting whomped with chunk, we'll take that chunk, we'll take that chunk, we'll put it in there. They get, no, they... No, you know, and they get waylaid and all that, because the laws change and all that, and there's no stable, so they're going to demand, see, they're demanding a stable world system and order. So that's what's, that's, to me, that's, that's a part of what's coming up here. And, and also during that, you see, when they're squabbling with each other, they're not, they're not repressing. So this is a time when those who follow the light of Jehovah can go forth and begin to establish. Now, of course, there are some who will also join in this argument as to, you know, which way it's going to go and all that. So it'll be a tripart thing. We're just talking possibilities here, something to be aware of as we're going up this way. Because remember when we showed the Uranus cycle that, um, which, by the way, is going to uh, hit its crunch right up here. Right up here. And um, this could be, it doesn't have to be, this could, but it could, it could result in war, it wouldn't ha doesn't have to necessarily. Yes, there's been prophecies, the Gautaman prophecies of, you know, Third World War, and uh, Washington's vision of, a, you know, three great crises that, you know, uh, attack against the United States and People reckon, well, we've had two, and the third one might be Third World War, or whatever. So there's all those considerations, but it just might also be an ecological catastrophe. Anything, you know, it, we'll have to wait and see, because a lot of this is left up to man, because you see, the angels of Jehovah say, look, man, we have been there, we've, we've, we've stood you up, and we showed you the way to go, we've shown you the light, you know the light, you know the right way, now it's up to you to make the right decision. Now, as it happens right now, the milieu out here, at this time, the cloud of the beast is essentially, uh, or the, well, it's like a smoke, kind of a black smoky thing, sort of, that was everywhere. It was hard to see through and all that. Well, that's settled. It's, it, there's just like this uh, stillness in the milieu out there of darkness. 
And so that when we get into 2017, 2018, when the dip of the light starts going, the milieu light, the atmosphere of milieu light starts moving up and um, through this jaya and all that. See, there's a lot more going to be going on here because this is, this is like, this is like the uh, midnight, dawn, you know, sunrise, high, high noon, and sunset over here. Well, this, this is like, all right, so we're moving up toward this light, toward this, this. And so what that means is, a lot of times, is that there's drought. A lot of times that means drought. And uh, there's also, but there's also this other turbulence going on. But um, in, the, in the chart, uh, the Elohist chart of light and darkness, which we haven't shown yet here. Uh, the uh, the time from here, man is going to be moving up through Jaya. Now, Jaya, we learned from Owaspi, is a time of fevers and epidemics and so forth. Now, the meat eaters, because I mentioned in the past about the beef boys versus the vegans and all that. Well, what's going to happen here is that this slow rise through the Jaya, you see, and then, and then the microbes within man who's been eating meat and all that, uh, his man's um, he's going to start becoming sick, uh, overtly sick and, and ill from the effects of eating animal substance. And this is going to grow more and more upon him as we move toward this way. And so, and the, and the signs of the times are going to be with the vegan, the army of God, the vegans. And uh, because that's what Jehovah created man for. Look at our teeth. They're not carnivorous teeth. Look at our intestines. They're not carnivorous intestines. They're herbivorous teeth, herbivorous intestines. Look at the eye hens. Okay? Herbivorous all the way. And raw food, mind you. They didn't cook their food. Anyway, those are just some thoughts to think about. We'll wrap it up here. Till next time. Jehovah's blessings.